Hey guys, welcome back to the Penny Pinching Prepper channel. Uh, for those of you who have uh, been around for a while, appreciate you coming back. And for those of you who are new, I hope I can teach you something that'll make you want to stick around and subscribe. Uh, today's topic is going to be about uh, saws, and more specifically, saws for um, SHTF situations okay um, at that point you're gonna want a manual saw you know you know eventually gas is gonna run out electricity is gonna be hard unless you got a really nice solar unit set up <clears throat> but even those are hard to lug out into the forest somewhere if you have to you know you get pushed out of your home your home gets taken over um, you can't sustain being in your home anymore. You know, you're, you're going to want to have some sort of a manual saw. And in the world of SHTF situations, there's really two different types of saw blades. Not saws, but saw blades. And we're going to go over the differences between those today and why one might work for you and the other one doesn't or you might want to require having both um, so to get down to it <clears throat> there's a saw blade that's a straight edge straight edge blade all right um, and it, you know, no curves, no bends, no nothing, no fuss, no muss, right? Nothing fancy about it. And then you have your your curved blade. All right, nice good curve through it. And they're both designed for two different reasons. Um, so the easiest way to put it is the curved blades um, are really designed for cutting above your head up over hand that's why if you ever see those ones on a pole or it's got the little saw on the end of a really long pole you'll notice every one of them are curved they do not come in a straight edge blade and um, that's because the curved blade is really designed for overhead work basically anything from the waist up um, so if you're cutting a tree that's fallen over and it's got uh, branches that are holding it you know somewhere around waist up this is going to be your best friend if you're cutting down branches in a tree this is going to be your best friend you know um it's really not going to be your best friend if you plan on doing stuff from the waist down, which means fall, you know, finding fallen trees that are on the ground already, uh, cutting down your own tree and it falling all the way to the ground with no branches holding it high up off the ground. Um, a straight edge blade is going to be your best friend, and, and this is why. Everybody wants to recommend these curve edge blades, and I, I love them, don't get me wrong, because technically the, the way the blade curves, you have to put less work into cutting. Um, it, it wants to, because these types of uh, saw blades, most of them um, in the Japanese style, as you're pulling, it wants to well, even, even on the, the American style ones that cut both ways, but as you're pulling, it's dragging the blade into the wood. Um, so you don't have to put so much downward pressure. The saw does more work for you, which is great. Um, but here's the issue. If the log is all the way on the ground because it's curved, and a lot of these curved ones... People want to get it with the handle because that's what's most commonly uh, recommended for ergonomics. Um, even with the, the straight handled ones, you still have the curved blade. And what's going to happen as you're cutting through, right? Let's, let's say my arm is the log. 
as you're cutting through, you're eventually going to hit a point, and as you can see, my hand down here is still showing, which means you have to turn the log. Well, what happens if the log's too big for you to turn? You're not going to be able to use it or you're going to have to find some way to cut it or hope there's enough space underneath to get an undercut and hope you don't end up pinching your saw or, you know, whatever the circumstances. There's so many different circumstances you can run into um, when you have to stop your cut. Uh, there are instances where you have to purposely stop your cut and go somewhere else, but when you run into, oh, I didn't realize that this was gonna happen, <clears throat> um, and you feel stuck and there's not much you can do about it, you feel frustrated, like you just went through a bunch of work for nothing. Um, now, I know I'm exaggerating examples, but these are things that you can run into. Um, so if a log is on the ground and you have a straight edge blade, um, especially one of these silkies. I love these silkies. Most people do. You're cutting down and you can see I can get all the way down even with the you know a little bit of finger underneath it. So it's going to get through it on the ground. Um, uh, the other thing is if it even gets into a, this is why I love the silky saws, if it gets into a little predicament where you need a little bit of room, you can angle it up and, and still get all the way down um, with plenty of grip space. <clears throat> but even with the curved silkies that you can angle it up with, you still got to fight the curve of the blade. It's never going to come all the way down. For example, I'm going to hang my saw off the edge here right but i still can't get all the way down you know it you just it doesn't work so these were basically designed from the waist up flat saws or uh, straight edge saws waist down um just a, a good tip to, to keep in mind. And the other thing is, if you plan on going out into the wilderness in a, you know, SHTF situation, um, and you plan on doing some bushcrafting, um, you, you have it in your mind that you're going to build a little cabin, or you're going to... Uh, uh, build some furniture like a, a bed or a chair or a desk or something right this is going to be your best friend the the, the straight edge saw versus the curved edge saw and the reason being is a lot of times when you're making wood structures unless you're doing super primitive you know, all round beam construction, no, no notching, no grooving, no, you know, uh, what's the word, um, jointing, okay, uh, this is fine, it'll do the job, but let's say you want to do some jointing where you, uh, saw halfway into a log and then you baton out a little notch of wood so you have a, a flat edge so you can you know bring two logs together like this flat and make them secure all right this is going to be much harder because you're going to get the curve in your notching and it's not going it's not going to line up right because of the curve you're going to want something like this because this will make a complete straight edge that makes everything nice <clears throat> unlike this so if you plan on bush crafting you want a straight edge blade no ifs ands or buts all right um if not i mean i'm not saying you can't do it with one of these but you're going to do a a lot more chiseling or you're going to have to suffer through not having the greatest surfaces to connect with one of the two um 
I can guarantee that. There, there's no way for you to get a perfect, nice, square, flat knot or a notch to interlock logs with a round or a curved edge saw blade without a chisel or um, something to, or a, your knife to baton into it. it. It creates more work for you is what I'm getting at. Um, and in an SH, you know, TF situation, you want to conserve energy, not exert it. So, uh, another thing is, is I recommend having multiple saws, just like, you know, a lot of people will recommend having an ax, um, a hatchet and a, uh, good, um, fixed blade full tang knife that you can use to, to beat on. <clears throat> um, so you have multiple cutting uh, tools and techniques. Well, I, I recommend the same thing for your, your inch bag or your bug out bag. Um, a smaller one that's easier to work with. This will be great for doing um, small branches, small trees, um, a lot more of your bush crafting with a small blade. Then I do recommend um, getting you something larger, like a Silky 500 or 650 or something along that lines. Uh, because if you do want to build a good structure that's going to keep you warmer, the, the thicker, the, the bigger diameter of log you can get to build your structure with the more insulation it's going to make and the warmer it's going to make you and not to mention it gives you more options for firewood um, you might not be able to find small stuff you might only be able to find big stuff uh, in the area that you're at and this this will make your life easier now to top it off <clears throat> um, I carry a, a, a backup blade actually I, I carry two and I don't mean a backup blade for these I mean a backup blade in case something on this fails like let's say um, I snap both of them I mean, not that I've done it but I've heard it's easy to do and I know I have bit, uh, bent the tip of this one but um, these saws are pretty easy to snap if you get a little bind and you're not paying attention and you go to, to push and it, it just kind of wants to snap. Um, uh, so it's always good to have a backup blade, but let's say the other end fails, the, the, the handle end. Um, you know, you, you lose the screw somehow, it loosens up, you're not paying attention, you lose the screw or the locking me mechanism uh, breaks and it wants to flop all over the place or, you know, imagination's the limit. If you can think it, you know, it probably will happen. Um, so what I tend to carry on top of these two is I, I, I carry a bow saw blade. And um, the reason I do is because they're extremely lightweight. They can attach almost anywhere or, um, to the outside of your bag or in, be stuffed inside of your bag and take up no room whatsoever. And uh, it's not that hard to make a bow saw frame from natural, you know, materials around you. I mean, all you really need is a good, strong um, branch and, and a way to, to cut it up. And if you have patience, you should be able to do that with your knife. Um, with no saw or axe. Um, but, so, maybe think about just having a backup blade like this in your, your inch bag, bug out bag, whatever you want to call it and learn how to make a uh, bow saw frame from from natural materials. Uh, there's tons of videos out there. I'm not going to go over it. Uh, I just wanted to bring you guys this, this little bit of information that it could be very helpful. Um, things that people might not have thought about. Um, 
the other thing I want to point out is if you notice I didn't say anything about I carry this I, I don't because I really do not plan on doing a lot of overhead work or waste and above work I just I don't plan on it um, I am into bushcrafting I like bushcrafting a lot and I, I love working with my hands and I'm not that bad at it um, I'm a lot better when I'm not on video. Uh, I still haven't got past that nervousness thing. But, uh, you know, I, I love working with my hands. And uh, so I picked all straight edge blades because I, I really do. Everything I plan on doing is from the waist down. Um, about the only thing I, th I can think of that I'd have to do from the waist up is maybe clim uh, clear a couple of branches to make room for something that I'm doing, like, you know, building a, a cabin or um, all the branches are really low laying and I have a fire going and I don't want the branches to catch on fire, so I might just cut them off out of the way or something like that. And something like this is, is going to work just fine for, for me to do that. Um, cause, uh, I won't be doing that many of them. Uh, other than that, guys, any questions, any comments, anything you uh, want to add, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, consider, um, liking. And for those of you who are new to the channel, think about subscribing. Um, I do all kinds of different uh, DIY projects. I like to give little tips that might save you with trouble, uh, hints on how to um, find quality stuff at a cheaper price, um, all that kind of stuff. I mean, name says it all. Penny Pinching Prepper, right? So, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and remember, God's good and God bless.